Shall we lift our hands to heaven this morning and let's glorify God for the awesome testimonies that we have heard. Clearly they are his doings and they are marvelous in our eyes. Will you give him the praise and the glory that is due unto him and celebrate the faithfulness of our God is worthy of all the praise, is worthy of all the glory, is worthy of all the honor and all the adoration. Lift your hand, lift your voice, give thanks unto God, give praise to his name. Celebrate the faithfulness of our God is worthy of all the praise, is worthy of all the glory, is worthy of all the honor. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Faithful God, wonderful God, wonder-working God, miracle-delivering God. Will you thank him? Breaking the siege of barrenness, destroying the yoke of hernia. This is God at work. Give him praise. Father, thank you. We bless your name. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor and worthy of all the adoration. Lift your voice and give him thanks. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. We give praise unto you. We celebrate you. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Thank him also for the answers to prayers. The prayer answering God. Every time we call, he hears us. Answers us. Responds to us. Grants our petitions. Grants our desires. Give thanks unto him. And give praise to his name. Right now, ask him to speak to you this morning. I've come here to hear your voice. I've come here to receive your word. Speak to me today by your word and let your name be glorified. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, this morning we have come with gratitude in our hearts to give thanks and praise to your holy name. Thank you for all that you have done, the testimonies of your hand at work, the answers to all of our prayers. We give all the praise and glory to you. And this morning, our eyes are on you, asking that you will speak to us again. And by your word, you will transform each one of our lives. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand, and please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. And congratulations. Amen and amen. A line of exhortation for our covenant of prayer this week has been engaging the God of vengeance for supernatural church growth. Engaging the God of vengeance for supernatural church growth. And we have discovered that more often than not, until the God of vengeance shows up, the enemy never gives up. Until the God of vengeance shows up, the enemy never gives up. In Psalm chapter 68 and verse 1, it said, Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them that hate him flee before him. Verse 2, as the smoke is driven away, so drive them away. And as wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Verse 3, it tells us, it says, But let the righteous be glad and let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Let God arise so that there can be liberty in the camp. And that will take place by him scattering the enemies. We must therefore understand that it will take the rising of the God of vengeance to ensure that the enemy is brought to silence. And the God of vengeance rises at our invitation. It is we that engage him as we call upon him. In Isaiah chapter 64 and in verse 1, the Bible says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens and that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains or the oppositions may flow down at thy presence. Verse 2, as when the melting fire burneth, the fire caused the waters to boil. It said, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. So we are talking here about the fact that for him to descend, for him to step in, there is a demand for you and I to invite him. He said, oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens and come down. That's the invitation for intervention. 
So it takes us engaging him to see him manifest on our behalf. And we have been looking all through this week at a number of the various reasons why there is the need to invite the God of vengeance to step in. And this morning we are going to go further. It's important to know that church growth is warfare. And we have said this all through the week. And it is a battle against the gods of this world who continuously hold to ransom a number of people ordained to eternal life. It is warfare. And it is a battle against the gods of this world that continuously hold to ransom a number of people ordained for eternal life. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 and 25, the Bible says the kingdom of God can be likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. It said, but while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears. So we discover that every time there is, as it were, the engagement to advance the kingdom. Because the kingdom can be likened to the sowing of seed. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that plants seed. So it is like the sowing of seed, spiritual seed everywhere. He said, but in the process, there is also the sowing of other seeds that the enemy is carrying out. To counteract the effort of the sins. To bring as it were to peril all of the various engagements of the sins. So we discover that it is not only us that are going forth. The enemy is also seeking ways to counteract every action that is taken. And that is why it is vital for us to understand that the God of this world is very active in various territories. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 12. The Bible tells us there, the Lord speaking, I will pass through the land of Egypt tonight and smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both of man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment, for I am the Lord. So there are gods of the land. There are forces that invade and hold territories to ransom, putting the souls of men in peril. If you look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, it said, Whom the God of this world has blinded, that they should not be able to come to the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. So we find all of these operations of the enemy taking place in various territories, seeking to hold men to ransom. In Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, You have it quickened who were dead before in trespasses and sins. He said, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. And verse 3, it says, among whom also we had our conversation in time past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of, north, of wrath, even as others so he's talking about the fact that everyone who is rescued from sin and brought into salvation is rescued from the cause of this world and from the prince of the power of the air those are the gods of the world holding them to ransom so the sinful things they are doing they are not doing it on their own there are forces that are at work that are seeking to hold them bound and that is why we engage in the spiritual warfare of inviting the God of vengeance to step in and to shatter the hold of every one of the gods of this world. And for us in this season, as we go forth, as we continue to advance the kingdom of God, the hold of the God of this world shall be shattered in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. I said somebody believe it, say loud amen. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. We saw an example in scriptures in Acts chapter 13, verse 8 to 12, how that Paul stopped the mouth of Elimas the sorcerer with blindness for the, des for the deputy to be able to believe the gospel. So you discover that these gods of this world work in various ways, including using human agents, like we saw here with Elimas the sorcerer. And the Bible tells us that he withstood them, seeking to dissuade the deputy from the gospel. But then when judgment came, 
not only was he silenced, but the gospel had a free course. As judgment lands in this season, not only will the enemy be brought to silence, but the gospel will have a free course. In the book of Titus chapter 1, verse 10 and verse 11, Titus 1, verse 10 and verse 11, he said, for there are many unruly and vain talkers. They are deceivers. He said, whose mouths must be stopped. Their mouths must be brought to silence. And the pathway for that to take place is by the invocation of the God of vengeance in judgment against the adversary. In the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 21 and verse 22, he said there that the Lord will arise as in Mount Parism. He will be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. He said, neither be ye mockers, lest your bands be made strong. The Lord will arise as he did in Mount Parism. What did he do in Mount Parism? That was when he arose on behalf of David and discomfited all of the philistines what did he do in the mount of gibeon that was when the sun stood still until all the amorites were destroyed that is comprehensive destruction of every satanic agenda that's what he means and he says that when we invoke the god of vengeance he will silence all of the adversaries no matter where they may be all of the adversaries of david were brought to silence on mount parison all the adversaries of Israel were brought to silence in Gibeon. And God says in the same way, he will do it again. In this season, every adversary of the gospel, every one agent of hell seeking to stop the advancement of this change of story agenda shall be brought to silence. That is why we must demand for the vengeance of the Lord to silence all oppositions on the path to the growth of the church. We must demand it. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 94 verse 1, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. That is, we make a demand. We don't just desire it, we demand it. We demand his intervention. We demand that he steps in. We demand that he shows up. And as we do so, we'll see his mighty hand at work in this prophetic season. The good news is this. No one adversary of this operation change of story prophetic season will survive it. The God of vengeance will arise and bring them to silence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the four level dimension of growth that God has ordained shall be fully delivered. And in the process, your own four quantum leaps shall also be supernaturally delivered. Will you rise on your feet with me and let us in a moment exercise our faith as we invoke the God of vengeance on our behalf to silence all the adversaries. He did it in Mount Parism, do it again. You did it in Gibeon, do it again. Everyone that is standing against the salvation of souls, seeking to divide, to divert them from the gospel, Lord, silence them. Let their mouth be brought to silence. Lift your voice and pray that prayer on the authority of his word. Lift your voice and pray. Pray that prayer in faith. This morning, every adversary, every agent of hell, every demonic personality that is seeking to stand against the fulfillment of this agenda we are decreeing that they be brought to silence every unruly talker every vain talker everyone dissuading people from the faith silence them in the name of jesus christ lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart he said the lord will arise as he did in mount parism arise O lord he said he will be wrought and angry as he was on mount gibeon lord let your anger be kindled against the adversaries of the gospel he said he will do his strange work he will do his strange act lord do it again in our midst do it again in our midst do it again in our midst lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart 
invoke the God of vengeance, the God of vengeance, the God of vengeance to arise and to fight on the behalf of his people, ensuring the establishment of his agenda in this season. Lord, thank you. Now lift your hand, lift your voice, and give thanks unto him. Father, thank you, and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. God will arise. Today, every unruly talker shall be silenced. Every deceiver shall be silenced. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be thoroughfare for the gospel. No interruption, no impediment, no diversion, no confusion. There shall be free flow for the gospel. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In all our engagement today, there shall be no interruption. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. And the good news is that your own four quantum lips is also established. In Jesus' precious name. We have a flyer for this coming Sunday, Covenant Day of Business and Career Breakthrough. Stretch your hand forward. And one more time, let's declare the breath of the Spirit upon these materials. Every flyer going out, every track going out, every one material that is out there and the ones that are going out today, they are returning with a mighty harvest. They are returning with a mighty harvest. We have cleared the interference. Therefore, they are going forth hitch free, returning with mighty harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen. amen it is done lift your hand let's give glory to god this morning appreciate him for the blessing of a day brand new day like this begin to speak forth into the day and make declarations concerning the day what you declare god will deliver what you speak is what you pick therefore make your decrees make your decrees make your decrees make your declarations do it right now in faith do it right now with confidence do it right now wholeheartedly do it right now do it right now and now thank him give him praise father thank you in jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen, amen. don't forget we have a morning prayer session taking place between 8 and 9 30 for those who are available ensure that you take advantage of it and be blessed as you do so in the name of jesus christ take advantage of the day to ensure that somebody hears of jesus from you and as you do that, he will honor you in return. In Jesus' precious name. You believe God, say loud, amen. amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm more than a conqueror. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed. Pick up the flyers and tracks you need and use them to advertise Jesus. God bless you.